here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for inviting me. And thank all of you for being here. Um, we have something really cool today for must know classic blues licks. Is that, did I get that right? Yeah, four, yeah, four must know classic blues licks. Yeah, I went through and found four ideas that I thought would be really cool that are very traditional in, in terms of their sound and playability. So nice. So I'm totally stoked about four must know classic blues licks. If you would like to learn how to play four must know classic blues licks, keep watching. If you want to learn it even faster, you can get Steve's brand new course called Blues Licks by Steve Stein at guitarzoom.com. That's guitarzoom.com. Take it away, sir. All right, so the first lick we're gonna do here is we're gonna be working in uh, A minor pentatonic, just keeping everything nice and easy. And we're gonna move into the second position. Okay, so if we think about this, if we were in A minor pentatonic, the first position, which most people know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift up into the second position. So on that seventh fret there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide in like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna move up play the 8 and 10 of the second position here, and then 8 and 10 of the first string here, and then I'm going to give that one a bend, and then end with this real traditional sound going from 8 to 9 here, then back to that 10. So it sounds like this. Here's the whole lick. That is super cool. And tell us about that note that you're playing there that's kind of like an ear, ear bending thing. You bet. So what I'm doing is I'm going from what we, in theory, we call it the minor third to the major third, which if you think about it from your chord, if you were playing an A major chord, it's this note right here. This is the major third. It's called C sharp. When you play pentatonic, that note doesn't exist. So what we're doing is we're adding this new note in, this new sound, and that's the octave of that. What I love about moving up into this second position right here is there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Once you learn how to play a lick up there, you know, you could... To start messing around with different ideas with those notes just thinking about that nine eight ten eight ten you got a bend there and then you can end ultimately with this cool nice can you give us like an idea of how you would use uh what kind of rhythm you might what kind of what would the rhythm guitar be doing if you were playing that lick over it well well I, what would the rhythm guitar be doing well if i was doing like a like let's say a swing feel Or, right? You see? So I'm thinking about that swing. If I was playing it straight, right? Stuff like that. I would take that same idea and give it a straight feel. Right? And I could give that, that little hammer on like a double time feel, it, like this. You know, anything like that sounds really cool. Absolutely love it. So that's the first of four must know classic blues licks. If you guys want to check out Steve's complete course, Blues Licks, which is about blues licks, you can check it out at guitarzoom.com. Take us to lick number two, which right, we must so know. Number, perfect. So lick number two, we're going to move back into the first position. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide back out again on that seventh fret, back to the nine. So we're winding up in this second box or seven, second position. I'm sliding with my third finger here. And then I'm going to the eighth fret of the second string with my middle finger. Okay. 
And that kind of sets me up for the next thing. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to the seventh fret again. So I'm actually leaving. You're getting a space there. And I'm going to do this little slide from seven to eight back to seven, which gives me what we call the blues note or blue note. So I have. And then I'm going to do my pull off. And then go to the seventh fret, which is the root. So it sounds like this. So it kind of becomes a little bit uh, quiet and maybe a little deceptive at the end. It starts off kind of powerful, and then you go into this, it just kind of fades into that root at the end. And then wherever you want to go from there. Dude, that is super cool. So that's lick number two. Can you put those two together? Well, sure. If you think about it, when I'm sliding, the big difference here is, is that depending on, and again, it's not, it doesn't need to be that well thought out, but if I'm thinking about moving into this second position moving up, I often will try and prepare myself by moving into my middle finger like we talked about. Right? And then this lick, I'd move in with my third finger. So understand that right now, both of our licks are actually moving us in an, in an upward direction initially, right? So I'd have to leave one to connect to the other one, right? If I go like this, I have to find a way back to that other lick. Now, maybe I wouldn't do the slide. Maybe I'd walk down. Like if I did this, the second lick here, or the first lick, I'm sorry, that I did. Maybe I come down like this. You see? So I'm kind of reversing the very front of that to, to appease the fact that I'm trying to get back down the fretboard, right? So that'd be a real easy way of trying to connect those two ideas together. Beautiful. I love it, Steve. Nice, man. So that's the first two of four. Where do we go from there? All right, so the next one we're going to do is one of my favorite licks. I love the sound of this stuff, and this is what I teach a lot when I'm teaching about blues, is I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to go from the minor third to the major third here, which is kind of a quintessential sound of that blues. I'm going to play that. And then on the next string, I'm going to play five and seven. Now that seven could be looked at either, either as a major sixth or maybe it's coming from major blues, I mean, major pentatonic, I should say. Any way you want to look at that, but, but I love the sound of that. And then what happens is at the end, I go to the five and the eight, which is now that minor sound again. So you have this weird transition of minor and major sound to more of a major sound to more of a minor sound. Which always reminds me of like rockabilly or something like that. So that's my next lick is I'm going to work my way up the fretboard. And then I'm going to go back to that seven. Back to the five. And it's just setting up an ultimate bend at the end. Right there. So I have... Dude, that has such a unique sound. Yeah, it's it's really in the the the, the cool thing about blues is the the further you move away from rock and blues and more into blues, the more you wind up really trying to learn how to manipulate the sounds of major and minor pentatonic and how they interact with each other. And that's really what this new blues course, uh, blues licks course, is about. Is it's a fusion modern uh, rock uh mashup of all of these different styles and of course blues goes back 100 years but um then you're you're taking all of these and kind of mashing them up to make a complete blues sound yeah basically the, the course begins with understanding how blues licks are built and we start with real basic ideas real classic ideas like what we're talking about now these sorts of things and then as the the course progresses it progresses excuse me it becomes a little more um, 
the emphasis becomes a bit more on more modern stuff, more, 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 adv I don't want to say advanced because I don't even know what really that means, but, but just taking it into a, a bit more unusual place than just the typical stuff. So, and there's, I forget how many licks are actually in here. It's like 80 some licks or 90 some licks or whatever it is. But so it, it covers the gamut from real basic essential things to typical, uh, you know, uh, electric blues, you know, classic blues, um, that kind of thing, moving into some more unusual motions, you know, using more of the fretboard and um, some more, tr I hate to say the word trickery too, but kind of that sort of thing. So you have a whole wide variety of different things that you can approach and go, you know, I don't really like the modern stuff. I like more of the classic stuff. Well, it's in there. Or, you know, I'd love to play some stuff that's a bit more like, uh, you know, Joe Bonamassa or something like that. Well, that's in there too. So there's lots of different variety and it kind of builds as it goes. Very cool. Now, would someone have to start at the beginning of this course and go straight through? Is it something where they can jump around? Well, half the fun is jumping around. I mean, I would definitely go through the beginning stages just to kind of understand all of the elements. Mixing major and minor pentatonic. What is the blue note? If you don't know what some of that kind of stuff is, um, it's, it's not only the learning of the licks, but understanding how to visualize and what some of those notes are. You might not be able to define all the notes from a theoretical standpoint. I don't care whether you can or can't. What I'm more concerned with is you getting comfortable with the sounds and, and how they impact what it is that you're playing. Um, so if you're trying to go for something, you know, if you want it to be straight minor, you know, then you'd have something like that. If you wanted it a bit more pentatonic, but if you want that bluesy sound, you know, there's lots of cool things like that that you can do, so. Bro, I mean, you can really play, man. I forget about that sometimes. It's like, you can teach for sure, but the dude can play too. And I'm just like, wow, that's, it's fun to hear you play, just to let loose a little bit. Well, and it is fun to let loose a little bit every once in a while. I, I mean, I love to play, but my job isn't to show off. My, you know, my job is to teach. So that's, that's what I focus on. So not you that I could, do I'm not saying I could show off to anybody. I'm just saying that's, that's not the way I view what I do for a living. So we need to get some, some more of uh, you and your groove and, and playing live. And is, do we have that stuff on our YouTube channels? You know, I, I played live for many, I mean, there is some stuff. I played live for many years, but I wasn't the guy that went, you got to take photos and you got to videotape. I, I, like, I never did any of that. So, um, you know, obviously I need to think about trying to do more of that. I just, I need to. I, I should probably do that more often. Well, I know everybody would love to hear, hear you play and see you play and show up live and... Um anyway um steve this has been awesome so this is three of the four licks we've covered already guys if you're enjoying this you will love steve's blues licks course cleverly titled blues licks at guitarzoom.com whole lot of people have already gotten that course and uh if you want to learn this stuff even faster that course will help you cool all right man so let's see what you got on this fourth must know classic blues lick Okay, so a fourth one, let's, let's focus on doing a turnaround. And these are very typical classic turnarounds. I'm actually going to give you two of them uh, since we're learning one. I might as well show you both these. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm in the key of, of A, thinking about A blues. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, so this is a real typical sound, but it sounds great like at the end of a, a phrase or the end of your blues or something like that. And what I'm doing is I'm just moving up to the ninth fret here and I'm going to play the ninth fret of the third string and the ninth fret of the first string. And you can play your pick on both these. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I like to, it's called hybrid picking where I'll play with my, my pick and my middle finger at the same time. And then I move down to eight, move down to seven. And then I do that little hammer on from minor to major third. And then go to the first uh, string, fifth fret there. So I have. Okay, now at the same time, let me show you this just real quick because it's the same rhythm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the fourth fret of the fifth string and then the seventh fret of the fourth string and go. Mm -hmm. 
So right here, what I'm doing is I'm playing four, seven, four, five, seven, five, six, seven, six, and then I'm hitting those two sevens together. Okay. Or what I could do, watch this. If I go to seven and six, it actually sets up for the the five chord of the twelve bar blues. So this is like, let's say you're coming off your end. See, I could go to that seven and six, and it directs itself to that five. That five chord. Mm -hmm. If I do this, it just ends on the A chord. So by changing one note there, can change the way that that end phrase sounds, which is really cool. That is very cool. So, uh, man, can you, I just want to hear you play a little bit. Can you play like those four classic licks and just give us some context of how we might, like, give us the vision of once you put these things together, what can we do with it? Well, the, the thing I think about is, is in anybody's playing, it's always, it, you know, it doesn't just come down to licks. What I think about is what I've always referred to as dynamic variation, which is if you're playing low, play high. If you're playing fast, play slow. If you're playing a lot, play a little or don't play at all. You know, if you're playing loud, play soft, that sort of thing. So when you're playing, it's, it's always nice to have dynamics or dynamic variation in your playing. So if you were coming off something where you go... And you're really kind of hammering in, and then you come back to a... Something like that. Notice how I got really quiet. You see? So it's, it's always about shifting back and forth. If I'm a little low, I'll go up higher. Or if I'm a little bit louder, I'll go a little softer or different kinds of things like that. And I even use tempo in that way. Like sometimes I play things that are, I, I was used to try and explain this like going up a hill. Like when you go up a hill, you know, you're getting to the top of the hill and you're really tired and you're slowing down, right? And you get to the top of the hill and you come over the top. And now what happens? Well, you start speeding up. So when you do licks, like I always love these things where you go, so it gets slower and then it gets faster and it gets slower again. Because it's very dynamic in the playing. Now, there's no doubt that you need to know some licks and you need to know some things about your fretboard. And of course, we talk about all that in the course anyway. But it, all of these things are important. It's just always trying to figure out how to cater it to where you are in your playing journey. You know, if you're missing certain elements of technique or you're missing certain elements of visualization in your fretboard, these are things that you, you wind up having to work on in addition to whatever. You know, some fun licks that you're learning how to play. I love connecting things together. So if I'm playing here... You know, you figure out how to move back and forth through these positions, which is really fun. <laughs> Dude, you make it look so easy. And I think, uh, you know, the thing to, for everyone to be cognizant of is don't do the comparison game. I mean, you know, you watch Steve and you're like, goodness, if I could do like one tenth of that, I would be way ahead of the game. And that's kind of, that is the game. It's just to wherever you are to move forward from where you are right now to where you want to go. And don't compare yourself to other players because I assure you, there's players that Steve looks at and there's like, and he's like, holy crap, you know, I can't play like that. Who cares? The whole point is to have fun and just to get better from where you are. Don't judge yourself against other people, other talents. They have different guitars, different experience, different training, different skill sets, different whatever. Like, who cares? Just focus on what you do and don't get caught up in the trap of comparing yourself to other players. Yeah, one of the most that, important things is, is trying to learn what you can do and what you can't do. Like, the more you understand about yourself and your ability to play, um, the, the easier it is to make uh, wins, to make steps, to make, to make, you know, attainable goals. But you have to understand what you can do 
and understand what you can't do. You know, it, it can't just be like, you know, in, in my years of teaching, what I find is I always, I always think of it like clouds out in the sky. You have, sometimes all these clouds are kind of connected together, but sometimes they're just all over the place out in the sky and they're just, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're random and they, they don't have anything to do with each other. A lot of times people, that's the way they view guitars. They learn all these different things, but there's no connectivity between any of it. So you're working on theory and you're working on technique and you're working on licks and you're working on rock and you're working on finger picking and you're working on blues and you're working on whatever. And it's all over the place. And then people go, well, I don't, I, I don't understand. I don't understand what I'm supposed to do all this. Well, for me, part of it is, is if you were to stop worrying about 750 different things and start figuring out what is it that you want to be able to do? What is it that you can do? And how do you build a bridge from where you, what you can do to what you want to do? And be realistic about it. I mean, if you're practicing 10 minutes a day, be realistic about it. If you're practicing five hours a day, be realistic about it. But understand you and stop beating yourself up because you have three jobs and you have five kids and you have a whatever. Find a way to enjoy where you are and, and start learning how to get to that next level. That's, you know, like any of the, the courses I do, any of the videos that you watch on social media, the point isn't to absorb all of it. The point is, is to get in there and find some things that make sense to you that fit where you are and go, okay, let me just grab those two ideas, shut everything else down and just focus on those two ideas until they become something that not only can I play it, but I absorb it. I absorb the idea. So the next time I grab my guitar and I go, that lick is a natural extension of what comes out of my fingers when I play. If it doesn't, if it's just practicing it and making it into another cloud of 750 things, chances are it'll go away at some point, right? So that's the way, that's like my theory on, on learning how to play guitar all the way around is, and I'll stop talking here because I'm, I'm bogarting the time, but think about it that way and, and you'll enjoy your journey a little bit more and you'll be able to use any of your learning materials you'll be able to optimize the usefulness of that, that, those learning materials. So. I love it. Steve, you actually reminded me of something. Uh, I'll just give people a little backstory on years ago when you and I were talking about what do guitarists actually need versus what um, are they currently getting? And I think most people we agreed are just overwhelmed with information and there's so many videos, there's so many instructors, there's so many ways to learn. It's like, you can get distracted and that's how you and I came up with the VIP uh, membership, which was, we purposely took, and you guys can check out VIP if you want, <clears throat> it's at guitarzoom.com. But VIP was all about, uh, actually instead of just giving people more, it was the whole idea behind, behind VIP was, you get a core set of, of lessons, and then each month you get one thing to work on that's new. And so depending on your journey and where you want to go with it, um, you get this small bite-sized lesson each month that is easy to consume. It's easy to watch and to execute and to actually go and implement in your playing so that you don't get overwhelmed and you don't, and you can just tune out everything else and just go into the membership site click on your video for the month and then focus on that one thing. And it's been tremendously helpful to the members of VIP. Yeah. And I, I totally agree. That's the whole point. And, and, you know, like I said, it, wherever it is that you're, you're finding benefit in your education, whether, you know, it's with me or, you know, somebody else. I mean, I know most of the guys out there that, that do teaching like I do, and I, I respect them all. Um, you just got to find somebody that speaks to you, that, that you understand that, that, the way that they teach makes sense in your eyes and your ears and your fingers. And, and like Dan said, you got to shut it down. Like once you get something, you know, don't, don't try and over absorb too many things. I, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of all of this. Like I spent half of my life doing exactly what I teach people not to do now because, um, you know, it I, I could do a lot of things, but I just never really felt like I had a control of my fretboard and, you know, I'll be the last person to tell you that I know everything. I don't, I don't know a lot. Um, you know, there's not a day that goes by. I don't practice at all. Um, so, you know, it, it isn't just you that practices. I practice all the time, but I'm building on top of something that I've already established. So my game of being 
competitive and trying to be whatever the best is supposed to be out there is irrelevant to me. I'm happy in my skin and I'm happy with the way I play. I just want more. I just want different things. I want to keep the journey going. And so, you know, that's what I, I always want for everybody else too, is to find a way of being comfortable in your own skin, your own playing. So. Very cool. Guys, if you've enjoyed this four must know blues licks session here, I would really appreciate it. If you would, um, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, like it, share it with somebody that you think could benefit. That's always awesome to share the love. If you're watching this live with us now, <clears throat> thank you for being here. I really appreciate your time. And if you're watching it uh, after it's been published and it's actually not live, thank you for watching. And uh, please share it with somebody that can benefit. I hope you guys can benefit out of it. If you enjoyed this, I think you'll love Steve's new course. Blues Licks by Steve Stein. It's available right now at guitarzoom.com. Thank you so much, Steve. Really appreciate your time, buddy. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.